Okay, well, today's hybrid is a quick discussion of another example of normalization using a data table. This is a data table for a company called Instant Cover, and they are staff that quickly goes in and covers uh, missing shifts at hotels. For starters, when you look at this, there's a few different pieces of information that can be used as candidate keys. Uh, there's the NIN, and that's a British thing for the uh, national insurance number. It's the same thing as a social insurance number or a social security number. There's also a contract number. That's also a possible candidate key. The rest of this stuff isn't. But first things first, got to discuss about the issues of this data. For example, if you need to add data, we need to add several things. We need to know the NIN of a staff member if we are going to add a hotel. Because right now you need to have all of it to be able to fulfill this. Same thing, we can't hire someone unless we already have a hotel. Also, we can't delete anything because, for example, if we were to delete contract number 1C1024, we'd lose the fact that Diane Hoshin ever worked there. And there's also an update anomaly or a modification anomaly, depending which phrase you want to use. For example, if we were to change the contract number, we end up having to change multiple records that affect multiple uh, employees, and that's that's a no-no. Same thing applies to hotel number. So, in the end, if we were going to take this diagram, we will want to put in an unnormalized view. such as this. Uh, let's go and describe this properly. So we're going to call that instant cover. And we would have NIN contract number hours e name hotel number hotel location so we end up with this arrangement of fields now these are the candidate keys and we have some foreign dependencies and whatnot and Once we're done breaking down all the uh, functional dependencies, we end up with an arrangement that's a bit like this. So we have these two of the candidate keys. The functional dependencies are as follows. Hours is dependent on contract and the NIN number. The employee name is dependent on the NIN number. The contract number the hotel number and hotel location is dependent on the contract number. The hotel location is dependent on the hotel number. So if I were to break that down so that it's in smaller bits and pieces, you would want to break it down as follows. So that our table is more along the lines of this. Say we create a table called hours. It'd be like this, employees, like this, and then we'd have contract, which is like that. So now we have this arrangement, hours, which has the contract number and the NIN and the hours the employee worked. We have the NIN and the employee's name. We have the contract number, the hotel number and hotel location. So now we are in second normal form because we've gotten rid of all the 
partial dependencies. So now all we have left now is a functional dependency over here. So if we were to remove the trans, uh, sorry, not a partial dependency, a transitive dependency. So if we were going to get rid of the transitive dependency, in other words, this value is dependent on this value, and then this value is dependent on this value, we end up with what's called a transitive dependency, and we need to get rid of it. So how would we break that down? We'd break it down as follows. We call this hotel number, hotel location, and we get rid of hotel location from here. And now we have a properly broken down um, set of tables. And that's how you'd break down that whole bit into four separate tables that breaks it down properly. Um, is there anything else you could do with this data? Theoretically, yes. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to take that and diagram it using ERD plus so that you have a better idea of what it would look like visually. So we're going to go diagram this. We're going to give ourselves a bit of sideways location. So we have four entities, one, two, three, four. And we have one called employees, which has a NIN number, which is a unique value, and then an E name. That's our employees. We also have hotels which has the hotel number, has its unique value, and the hotel location has this descriptor field. Um, and now we have two associative tables. There's one called contracts. Actually, I was on an associative table. It's just a um, regular table, I should say. And this one is the contract number, which is unique. And we have one associative table, which doesn't even need to have a name. Uh, it needs to have a name, but no, no attributes yet. It's called ours. And we'll actually give an attribute called ours, because that's what our paper here would have said. And now we're just going to do the connection. Hotel has a contract and a hotel can have many contracts. Contract can only have one hotel. And A contract can have many hours applied to it, but any given entry for hours is only for one contract. And same thing with the employees. An employee may have many hours, but the hours must be entered by an employee. So in the end, we took this diagram, this piece of information, and turned it into this diagram. Um, now, take your time to go answer some questions for this hybrid.